Welcome back to the Byron Lazane podcast. This one, I've got Andy Sachs from Newtown, Connecticut. I'm not going to mess that you up said again. It right. I appreciate I, it. I, absolutely. Yeah. This is game time. I've got to say it right. And Andy, I don't think you realize that you're the first podcast I've ever done here in the new space. I'm excited. This place is is something special and and talk about uh, goals for my team. This is the type of space I got to get my guys into. <laughs> we, we are in a space, you know, about an eighth the size of this. And this is just gorgeous, man. You've done well. I plan on doing a lot of podcasts here, but you will always be the first forever and always I, for me right here. Can I get a plaque on the wall? Yeah. Can Actually, I, I think we should do that. Can we, can we get something? The Andy Sachs plaque it, is going on the wall. I've made it. So Andy, I, I want to have you spend a little bit of time bringing people up to speed, who you are, how you got into the business. Andy has a mega team here in Connecticut, top one per, top half percent team at 50 plus million close sales last year. I think you did 54, right? Yeah, yeah. 54 million. Um, how many people are on the team? We have eight people right now. Eight people on the team. Just like we met, what, a year ago? Probably two more than that. Ago, yeah, something ago. about that, yeah. And I was impressed with you from like 10 minutes into that dinner conversation. Uh, I know some, a few people that have been on, a team, on your team, around town team. Yep. Um, really, really look up to what you're doing and how you're accomplishing it. So please just spend a few minutes, how you got into the business, who you are, all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, it's really kind. And um, you know, likewise, I couldn't say enough good things about you and what you've done. And it's why I'm sitting here today and kind of taking our uh, video production game to the next level as well. So I appreciate you having me on, but you know, it started like, I think a lot of us, right? I mean, real estate, I think a lot of people don't say, Hey, I'm going to grow up and be a realtor. Uh, for me, I was working corporate America. I was traveling around the country nonstop. Uh, it would have been like so many of our clients who relocate three, four times chasing the next job and opportunity. And now, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm getting married. I'm 26, 27 years old. And I don't want I don't want that life. Uh, I don't think my wife wanted that life. And so we had to make a change. My father-in-law was a very successful broker in Newtown. And he said, hey, you know, I sold the company to Coldwell Banker, the peak of the market. I'm gonna go back in and sell real estate a couple years. I'll teach you the business. I said, well, I got nothing to lose, right? I'll just go back to corporate America. And this is obviously before the crash. Yep. So I get in and the market crashes. And here we are, you know, 12 years later or so and different ideations of the team and trying and learning and failing more times than I can remember. And finally, we've got a great core group of folks who are just dedicated to growing their own careers and I'm just fortunate enough they decided to do it with me. And the, the fact that you did it through that crash, which was brutal, yeah. by the way, that's a testament to just staying committed. I mean, you know, you and I both know how many agents dropped out during that t or went and sold insurance or right. whatever, right? You just went right through all those tough years to end up where you are today. Well, we, we've had that conversation, you know, and it's, 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 when you're going through it, you're like, you know, did I make the right decision? What am I, God, what am I doing to myself and my family, and my future? And when you look back on it, you say it's the best decision ever because, you know, the phone stopped ringing. Nobody was stopping into the offices. Nobody wanted to talk real estate. It was fear inducing. It was scary. People had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of value on their homes overnight. And we're trying to sell properties. Yeah. So, you know, we, we just started knocking on doors and making phone calls and we took all the basics and just did them really, really well. And you look back on it, we're still doing those basics. That's how we grew our business. Yeah, I'm so, I, I want to get into that. The basics, what do you think is super important to focus on? Before we kind of touch on that, you obviously built a team. Did you build a team from day one? I didn't. Uh, okay. First five years, I was in real estate by myself as well as kind of consulting for other companies in different industries before I finally made the full commitment to get into real estate 100%. So in those five years, were you more part-time or? I was full-time everything. So full -time. I, was, I was burning the candle at both ends. And you, yep. can't, you can't do you know, everything really well, of course, right? Yep. Until uh, both my wife and a very close friend of mine said, listen, just... You know, you're, you're, you're being silly. Just do one thing really well. And that kind of, the light went off in my head. And, and said, we, you know what? when you say you were a solo agent, no assistant. No assistant. No real mentor besides maybe. My, my father-in-law was great. Father-in-law, okay. Yeah. But, but more or less, you know, kind of floating out there in a, uh, in a business that was seeing immense change quickly, both from a technological side and from a recessionary side. And just trying to figure it out. But one thing I was good at was talking on the phone and, and knocking on doors. So... When, when did you decide to build a team and why? Um, I built the team because I wanted something bigger than myself. You know, it's, um, it was never money driven. The business was never money driven. I always felt that that was a byproduct of success. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a part of something bigger. And so, you know, I started it and I thought it was cool and it would be great to 
be a team leader, and I failed miserably. I really did. I, I had good people around me, but I did not know how to manage. And I think that just comes with maturity and growth in any business. And through several mishires and missteps and restarts, you know, we finally figured it out and, and, and have folks that I, I genuinely care about and I think care about being on the team. Would you, if somebody was getting into real estate right now and they just called you, they're out of state, right? Yeah. Not competing or whatever. And they asked your opinion. Are you telling a new agent, find the team in your marketplace from day one or do kind of what you did and be an individual agent first, then join a team? What's your take on individual agent versus team? And by the way, just put a little context for me. I consider, you know, individual agents that have a staff of, you know, two admins or, or a TC and an operations manager. I consider that a team. Yeah, I agree. Where some people, you know, they're promoting themselves as an individual agent, but if they've got employees behind them, that to me is a team as well. Yeah. So individual agent versus team, your take. Um, I think it depends on the individual, right? I think um, I used to operate on an island by myself. And I got so used to it that I kind of enjoyed it. And transitioning now to have people around me and the excitement and energy that that brings has been, has been transformational in, in my approach to real estate. So I, it's going to really be individually driven. We actually have a gal moving down from Massachusetts who's joining our team in the, in the new year, uh, about a month or so. And she was at a, at a boutique office up in Massachusetts doing okay, starting her career about a year and a half in or so. And she was the perfect fit for a team atmosphere because she's going to get the power of her brand behind him, Coldwell Banker, but she's going to get the support and camaraderie that a team offers. And I think in real estate, the benefit of the team is that you're not alone. And there's too much time to, to waste in real estate when you're alone. Um, it gets frustrating when you're alone. There's nobody to talk to. You know, a traditional corporate office, you go into an office, you're surrounded by people. Um, you know, you have those days where you're just trying to get through the day, but there's support there. In real estate, if you're not on a team, you're really, you have your manager maybe, but they're busy. Yeah. On a team, you've got people around you to either commiserate with or celebrate with. And I think that's the benefit. And I think at the end of the day, most people, we're social creatures. We want to be with other people. And that's where the benefit of the team, I think, really lies. It's really tough. And we were talking before we started the podcast about secret agents, right? Yeah. Agents that nobody knows who they are, whether they're an individual agent or, or a small team or sure. whatever, right? And to your point, if you're not around people in this business, if you're not making the right connections, whether that's agent to agent or to the client, how are people going to know who you are? Yeah. Right. And, and I've always looked at it when, when I look at the individual versus the team atmosphere, how can one person, and this is, you know, literally how I pitch team value if a, if a client or, you know, a seller asks me, well, what the heck's a value in, in actually having a team, right? Well, if you had an individual agent that is trying to be the marketer, the negotiator, the admin. Yeah. They're showing other buyers homes, not yours, by the way. They're also putting your property on MLS. They're scheduling the photos. They're wearing 15 plus different hats as an individual agent. One person is going to get burnt out yeah. doing that. They're going to start to miss things if they're trying to wear every single hat. So the, from a client perspective, it's I just think if it's the right team, right, if you're executing, you're going to get far better levels of service when you have everybody that, that's, you know, their strengths are the hat that they're wearing. Yeah, I mean, to, to the point of, you know, before I got full-time real estate, I was doing many things and you can't do any of them well, mm -hmm. right? When you do one thing, you can really focus on and become a master of your craft when you do that. And I think that's where agents fall down. When you're an individual agent, you know, you're, you're, you're getting really good at prospecting and finding clients and finding clients. All of a sudden, you've got a bunch of clients and you get too busy to go back and prospect because there's no time. Right. So on our team, we try to promote guys. Listen, your job is to prospect and serve your clients, prospect and serve your clients. If you take care of those two things, you'll always have clients to serve and your clients you're serving will always be happy. That's all they have to worry about. That's really it. When you, you talk to a lot of new agents, because people are interested in team and interested in really successful agents like yourself. I'm baffled when new agents come in and they've watched, you know, HGTV or they've watched Bravo. Right. Yeah and they just are assuming that real estate is what they see on TV and that it's gonna be really easy and really flexible. I think to that, to that point, but it's also the, hey, I've been in town a long time, I've got lots yep. of friends, I'm gonna, lots people, of when, when they wanna sell, they're gonna call me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen that way, right? When I started in real estate, I was amazed how, in my first couple of years, how many of my closest friends did not believe in me, yeah. right? Because they're like, think about it. If you were gonna move to Florida tomorrow, 
would you look up on Zillow or wherever and say, let me find the agent with no reviews and no sales. Right. That sounds great. I'm going to take a chance on my next largest investment. I'm buying a second home in Florida. I'm going to spend a half a million bucks. Am I going to look up the agent that hasn't done a deal? Am I going to go get surgery from a doctor who admits, hey, you're going to be my first man. <laughs> Let's well, do this. You know, I, I had this conversation with my agents and new agents all the time. And I, most importantly, I have it with clients, right? When we're interviewing for a listing or represent them on a buy, I say, you know, we're going to try to be a trusted advisor, just like your accountant your financial planner, when they tell you something, you believe it because they have the experience, the track record, they can prove the data and how much they've made it for their clients. But for some reason in real estate, people are out there looking and they're just hiring Susie's best friend or, or Uncle Joe who's on his fourth career and there's no real track record. You know, The threshold of entry is really easy in our business and it dilutes the talent. And so I always urge clients to look at the track record, look at the experience and the numbers behind it. Because it's the same as hiring a financial planner. You want someone who's gonna really truly manage this large asset of yours, either acquiring it or selling it. I think that's the shift we have to look at in the general public. Because you know, everyone knows a dozen realtors, right? And, and, They're and everywhere. everyone knows a bunch Just of financial- Starbucks and <laughs> tell them to raise their hand. <laughs> I need to buy a house, everyone jumps up, hey! hey. You know, but you know, it's, it's, it's the same idea, right? You know, why, why do we choose realtors just because they're nice. Right. You know, we don't choose financial planners that way. We'd like them to be nice. We'd like to enjoy our time with them, but we choose them because they're really good at what they do. So at this point, you're super experienced. Are you willing, and I, I think I know the answer, but are you willing to say to a new, hey, you know, this is how we do business. Go out and, you know, sign on with whatever X brokerage, right? And knowing that over the next 12 to 24 months, their eyes are gonna be opened really yeah. wide and then they're probably gonna circle back, almost like you do with like a seller that's yeah. like they're way overpriced and you're like, okay, go list with so-and-so, I'll get you when you expire. I would rather that. I would rather them have um, you know, the taste the taste of what it's like to be out there on your own. I'd rather them also have someone else teach them how to do paperwork and things like that, then come to us and learn that's how to- That's a good point. How, <laughs> come to us and learn the real nitty gritty of client service and prospecting. Yeah, because you're next level. And we're, so- We're trying to be. If you're gonna bring somebody yeah. from zero and they don't understand how you got there to 50, 60 million dollars. I mean, what do you think you guys will do this year? The goal is about 75. 75 million, right? Yeah. To go from zero to 75 million in sales, that's years, that's experience, that's 10,000 plus hours. I always look at the Malcolm. It's a, it's a lot. Uh, of, Malcolm Gladwell, Gladwell, yeah. The 10,000 hour thing, yeah. right? You've put in your probably 20, 30,000 hours, right? It's, it, Tons it's, of sleepless nights and fear and, and all that that folds into it, you know, and it's, um, but people have to come to that in their own conclusion. You, you can't force them to. You can talk about it, but you have to experience it. And I think that's why failure is really important too. Yeah. I think people are afraid of it. Why is the failure rate so big though in real estate? Like why is it nine out of 10, 8.8 .8 agents out of right. 10, right? 88% of agents turn their license in by year four. Why is it so big? I think, I think that uh, me media in general has made it appear easy. You know, back to the HGTV conundrum we battle, right? Both from our client side who think they know what to do. Oh, yeah. it's all, it's, it goes both know, ways. You're going to have an open house and we're going to get four offers. Ah, not so much, right? And then on the real estate side, it's easy to get into. It's a 60-hour class and a pretty easy test, right? And it's cheap to get into. And so it's, the threshold of entry is really low. And so that combined with media outlook and, and, and the perception of people not in the business to see what we do, we open doors, we talk about how pretty kitchens are, there's so much more behind it to growing a business, a sustainable business. And people don't see that until they get into it. And I think it really catches a lot of them off guard. You've been, and ever since we met that night in, I don't know where the heck that was. What restaurant was that? Trumbull? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere over there? You know, I've been following you, I've been following you on social. You're one of the most active agents in terms of producing content, putting out informational videos. If you're a new agent, right, would you focus in on producing content like you're doing at this point and producing a lot of it? Would that be one of the first things you do? Would you do more tried and true, door knock, expired, FISBOs? maybe even direct mail, which is super, super, you know, tried and true. What, what would you focus on first? There's so many different things you can do as an yeah. agent, right? You can, you can really kind of lose focus because there's so many things. It's too much. 
There's too much. What's the first thing you do? You go back to basics. You go right to basics. You go to, and I, I, I built my business on expired phone calls. When, I, when the home comes me off too. the market, I'd call them, I'd knock on their door, and I gave myself two options. If I kid, leave me alone, or kid, fine, come on in and talk to me, because you're not going to leave me alone. Right. Those are the options. I think you, you probably subscribe to the same, same mentality. Um, I think expireds are, are a dying breed. I know that uh, a lot of the, the great yeah, coaches... Yeah, why do you say that? I'd really... Uh, you know, it's interesting. So that. when we were calling expired to be of a career, they'd be like, wow, you're the first one to call or you're one of three guys to call. And when you're battling three, they're not the, the seller is not annoyed yet. They're maybe even feeling special. People want to talk to them. And the odds of getting in are much higher. But now you call, at least in our market, you're the 15th guy to call. Mm-hmm. You are the 20th guy to call. I, I hate realtors right now because of the, that. I tell our team all the time and hopefully nobody on the shoreline is listening to this sam i tell our team all the time we've we really have it good like if you go to your point to a market in california right you are definitely on day one by 8 30 the 15th yeah. agent that called yeah. like it's so massively competitive and here on the connecticut shoreline where you know we're, we're doing most of our deals we don't have the 15 agent problem it's coming. like you're having. It's coming. Right? It could be. I mean, our average age pops here on gonna, the shoreline. Just going to ask that question. It pops yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. You know, it, it's, and it doesn't mean that, you know, it just means that maybe those agents are relying more on referral based relationship and sure. that type of thing because they're later in the game and, you know, who really wants a cold call? Sure. But here we still have a massive white space on, you know, Vulcan 7 or Mojo. We're yeah. using those two dialers. Yep. Yeah, we're a Mojo. And it's not to say that we don't do it anymore, but no, it's, not the, it. it's not the bread and butter of what it was. But I'll tell you what it is. And we're going to go back to So you. if you're a new agent, though, in, 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 yeah. in your market, not to cut you off. Please. If you're not going to, maybe if you're not going to get it all on expireds, is it door knocking then? Well, we're still going to do expireds, but we're going to take it even more basic, right? We're going to door knock. Yeah, I agree. So we're going to have there. a package. Because nobody's different. fucking doing that. Nobody is so fear inducing. And if you can get someone over the fear, just go knock on the door. They're saying they're, you're delivering information. That's what you are. You're an expert delivering information that this seller needs to see. And if you can get a face-to-face, the odds of actually getting an appointment and relaying that information skyrocket, more so than a phone call, right? So you make an appointment. You got the packets in the car, you pick eight a day, you go drop them off. If they're not there, you drop them off. But now you also have a reason to call. Say, hey, Mr. Seller, did you grab that packet I left at the front door for you? Did you have a chance to look at it? Oh, I didn't have a chance. Not a problem. I'll call you back tomorrow at six o'clock. You know, and you got to believe, you got to believe you've got the information. You're a great content developer, right? I mean, you are all over the place. You nailed it right there. When you walk up to the door and you believe that you're delivering valuable information, you believe and you know it. Yep. And then you better have it. You better have something different. Yep. That, that, that's what I think are similar our teams offer. There's something fundamentally different for people to, to open it up. You know, our business cards, I should have brought one. They're, they're round. You've seen them. You know, it's called the Around Town Team. Everything's branded around. It's round for one reason. It's because when you hand it to a seller or a buyer or anybody out in public, they say, huh, that's different. And then we immediately say, we're different. Because realtors are dime a dozen. Yeah. Right? So you got to stick out. I like that name, Around Town Team. That's it. You know, it, it's 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 a little corny. That's okay, but it's Dude, but we're around. We are. We want to be everywhere I'm until a, you need us. I'm a big believer in corny in real estate yeah. because you just you've got to like people get so caught up in the per, what. How are people going to perceive me yeah. if you're not out there corny? Corny meaning let people know I'm a sales agent. I'm yeah. a real estate advisor. I'm here. I've got the goods. I take I'm this here seriously. to help you. I yeah. take this seriously. Some people might see that and be like, oh, dude's a little corny. Yeah. I see that as I'm freaking passionate about what I do. I know I can help you. And the people that really want the help, they're going to gravitate towards yeah. that. Absolutely. I agree. And you got to prove it, right? You can't just say I'm different. You have to show why you're different, right? Whether it's the numbers of sales you've done, whether it's the marketing you implement, you need to be fundamentally different in this business. Because as I said, realtors are dime a dozen. Yeah. And for whatever reason, maybe it's the social media like days that we're living through. People take passion and they look at it as corny mm. or they look at it as salesy. Well, on the flip side, people take social media and if anyone has a mic, they can all of a sudden feel important. Yes. Right? So the, the consumer has to wade through what is somebody just trying to build a brand that doesn't even exist yet mm-hmm. you know, and feel important. To, to fulfill something inside themselves versus what if someone develop, de- delivering substantial value? 
Yep. And that's our struggle. And that's what we try to do day in and day out. Because with social media, anyone can be a star in their own mind, right? Yeah, 100%. And so where does a consumer say, that's a real one and that's a, that's, that's a fake? Abs- well, when, you know when they're going to say it's a fake? In about a year or two years when the market gets really real and it's going to be quite obvious. Yeah, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'm excited. It's coming. I just yeah. signed a short sale yesterday. Did you do a lot of short sales we when the market went down? A lot of them. Yeah, I mean, so you're already an expert in it. Yeah, totally. You have that skill in your back pocket. Yep. You're ready to take it out of the toolbox if you need it. It's coming. And we're going to do it again. I, I don't think it's going to be as severe as a drop as it was in the, you know, yeah, the Great Recession. It, spend a couple minutes. What do you think the next this next I, market is going to look like over the next five years? I think we are 12 to 18 months out from a pullback in the market. We're going to, and it's going to happen before, but you know, listen, a lot of real estate is, is lagging indicators. So we're always looking backwards, unfortunately. But we're not going to realize it until 12 months from now, 18 months from now. I think we're looking at 10 to 15% in, in, in value drop. Um, I think it could be more severe in other parts of the country just because we didn't really come back as much in That's Connecticut. Right? We kind of hit the bottom. We skidded along the bottom. There's not a whole lot else to go, but we're, we are going to drop. Um, and it's going to be more opportunity for folks. It really is. Now, I think the good thing is people who were buying... You know, the average lifespan of, uh, of a consumer living in their home has increased, right? It used to be like every five years now, I think we're seven, eight years in, in a home. And so people are building that equity more. So I don't think they're going to get hurt as much on the short sale side. But some people who bought two years ago and then have to sell a year from now, if they lost 10%, they're going to be close to break even or short sale, depending on what their needs are. I don't think it's going to be horrible, but I do think it's going to be a little bit of a market reset. And people do have more equity right now. Yeah, they are. People, yeah. people are being smarter, which is... A good thing. Yeah. So. They're, yeah, they're not pulling out and doing dumb shit like, yeah. like they did before. But every pullback or, you know, more of a normal mark, whatever you want to call it, opens up opportunity for people to come in and disrupt. And certainly even in these good times the last few years, we've seen disruptors pop up more so than ever. More yeah. VC money than ever in in the industry. Yeah. Open door. Not They're not in. Uh, no, we don't they're have They're not. And, and either Purple Bricks isn't in your market. Nope. Um, Redfin? Nope. I think Redfin's down down county in like, Sanford. Maybe. We're like protected in the Northeast from all this stuff. Thank God. Right? Yeah. Because Northeast is like a bag of, you know, always Every, eclectic mix. Everything mixed. comes west and south to us last. Last. Right? All the great stuff, the technology but, that we're trying to bring in early. but So we can see it. It's coming. Right? And, you know, you look up at Arizona, Open Door, they got a ton of listings, they're growing market share, yeah. all, all these different things. When you look at that stuff, to you is is when the market pulls back, is that the biggest thing to worry about as a team lead, as a broker, as an individual agent? Is that the disruption that you're most worried about? Or is there another disruptor uh, coming into the industry that you're focused on? Man, that's a great question. I think I think there's a disruptor out there that we don't even know about yet. I mm-hmm. think there's something happening. It could be from one of the existing companies. It could be from the Zillow. It could be Amazon. It, it could be very well be Amazon. I mean, they're putting a lot of money in this industry right now that we don't know about. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, I think that, you know, a model like Redfin and Open Door is very, uh, I don't want to use the word scary, but it's going to, it's going to hurt people, right? It's going to push people out of the business. Now, at the end of the day, people still want great service, right? It's, it's why the top financial advisors still thrive today. Even after all the new banking regulations, after the great recession, it's why these guys are still thriving because people want great service yeah. people who understand the market there's always going to be a fundamental need for great service i have a fidelity account but i also have a financial advisor i mean right. i have the fidelity is more of like okay this is the money i'm gonna play with play with and i, yeah. I don't do anything yeah. that dramatic but i would never discount having somebody in my corner as a financial advisor i gotta as, pick up i gotta pick up the phone CPA. i gotta talk to somebody yeah you know and i think that's where the very best of our business will grow and I think that the marginal to lower end are going to fall off. Well, because I'm not spending, I'm not spending eight, 10, 12, 15 hours a day in looking at finance. Right. I'm not looking at the stock market. I don't know. I don't get it. Exactly. So why would I just go on to my Fidelity app 15 minutes a, a day or a week and think that I'm going to f- hit a home run? Right. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't right. add up. I want somebody with years of experience, hours and hours and years and years of doing that craft, of perfecting it, of learning, of, of investing in themselves. You know, yeah. I want to partner with someone that's investing twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars in their own education every year so that they're the if it's finance, they're the at the top, their their tools are sharp, 
they know what they're doing. Absolutely. And I think throughout history, there's always been market disruptors. Things always, always change, but the best always stay. Now, we will have to adjust. There will be some changes that we'll need to adopt, fold into, but I think that'll be opportunity and not, not as much of a detriment, I think, as others think. Going back to team versus individual, because you and I have both decided we've made the decision, team's the way to go. It's how we're going to fit into this business yep. long term. You think there'll be less individual agents when the market comes back? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's twofold. I think one is people will see the increased value in teams. I mean, it's already happening. And I think two is the industry is going to get younger by nature, right? Um, you've got more millennials coming into the business. You've got even folks who are you know, transitioning out of one career, even if this becomes their second career, they're still on the younger side of things. And I think they're going to see the value of team and being around people. So I think, I think they're going to continue to grow. And I think that what that might also do is might spur a boutique office kind of boom again. Mm -hmm. We might actually, I think, go back to that yeah, local office, really? right? Because at the end of the day, you know, you and I can open up our own shops. You're, you're with William Ray, but some of the Coldwell Banker, they're great local, you know, great local and now national brands, right? Yep. And, and they, they give us a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, one in company, your, your, your team could be its own boutique office and be everywhere William Ravis and Coldwell Banker put you. Yeah, it's... I, I want to frame this question up correctly. Okay. Because um, I don't want it to... I'm not saying like, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course yeah. not. I, well, I don't want it to make it sound like anybody's broker is not bringing value. But do you... Let me ask it this way. Do you believe you could do what you're doing with your team from any brokerage? You don't have to, I mean. It's a great, it's a great question. You know what I mean? No. I, I, do you think I, I you think. could do it from just any, any, any brokerage or do you value the, Coldwell Banker is a monster in the right. industry. Do you, do you um, really see that as a huge advantage? I, you know, at the moment I do. And, and Coldwell Banker for me, from the very top of our, you know, the, the CEO of our parent company, the NRT, to our regional president, to my manager, has embraced my crazy ideas and had my back at every turn. Yeah. And um, you know, for us in our market right now, it still holds. You know, being Coldwell Banker, so you know, it's a seller says, "Wow, I get I get this na international brand, and I get this really hyper local expert. Why wouldn't I go with you?" Yes, so right now, the course. value is still there. I agree with you. I still see the value in the big brand, um, and and the ones that last, right? Because I think there are some big brands that could be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Just, just the way they've been trending. Yep. Um, but the ones that last, I think the big brands that last are going to get even more powerful. But, but I, and it, maybe it's not boutiques, but the teams are really going to be the ones driving the business locally. You're going to see boutiques. That's already happening. I think you're, I think you're going to flip around. And you're going to see, you know, you know, the around town team with a Coldwell Banker team instead of Coldwell Banker, the around town team. I think yeah. you're going to see teams taking the lead on a lot of these. And that, and, and these major brokerages are bringing in such technology now. Part of what the disruptors are doing. They're starting to match. Yeah. Right? Because I see it as, that's the, that's the best point, right, is that all these disruptors are opportunities for us to say, oh, what are people responding to? Because they're basically beta testing everything. And we can say, oh, that feature right there works really well. Yeah. Similar, I, I, I always look at it as when Instagram saw that people really liked Snapchat stories, they were like, wow, that's cool. And, and Mark Zuckerberg's like, hmm. Maybe I'll offer them a billion dollars. Snapchat was like, yeah. fuck you. And he was like, no, fuck you. I'll just do Instagram stories right. and I'll take all your users. Right. Right? Yeah. And the really smart brokers can do the same thing. Oh, these lock boxes where you take a selfie and you upload your driver's license and it lets you right into the house without an agent. That's working and consumers like it. Okay, we'll just make the CB version of that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's not rocket science. It's really it's not. not. Kelly Williams is putting a ton of money into technology right now. I mean, they always have. Yeah. Did you see Gary Keller came back? Yeah. CEO. Yeah, he's gonna ride ride back on the on his horse and, yeah. and save the day. Um, you know, and Coldwell Banker is doing the same thing, and I know yeah. Raves is big into technology and was kind of ahead of the curve for many years, also kind of forward thinking. And I think um, it's 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 a business of adaptation and growth and constant change. I think that's kind of why we get addicted to it. As an, as an entrepreneur, how, how often do you change your mind? <sighs> My poor wife. Um, how about your team? What do they say every, every day? Are you like me where you're like, oh, we're completely changing everything today? I, I, I've tempered it. But, it, you know, as I'm sitting at my desk, I go through about five different ideations of everything before I then stand up and go talk to the team. 
but there's, there's you change always it in your own head five times and, yeah. then, and then you give them the yeah there's rev, always something rev six there's, i read something or i talk to a guy like you i'm like guys here's here's what we're gonna do differently <laughs> right but that's the fun of it right we run our own businesses and if we can find a way that services our customers and our team members better then why not make the change we can be very nimble that's the great thing about being a team and being a team leader is we can pivot on a dime to make things better at any given yeah. time right we're not committed to anything or anybody so if something's not working to sell houses for our clients or something's not working to making our team members you know excited and happy to come to work every day we can change it you can change it right away way. yeah and, that, and, th and that's ultimately why teams are going to win because they're more nimble yeah and we have to be we have to be mindful of that too right because you get a team and and you and i both want to grow and be bigger and and still serve our clients and serve our team members but we got to be careful that we don't lose that ability to be flexible you know, it's really, really important. And a lot of that is systems. So. 100%. Dude, let's wrap this thing up. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise, man. I appreciate uh, it. I, every time I get around you, I learn something. Like, even though it's little bites, a half hour here, hour there, I'm always learning when Likewise. I get around you. Likewise. Um, if people want to find you, connect with you, we're going to link it up. But where can they do that if they're listening uh, and, and they just want to go hit you up on so, Instagram or something? So, it's, you know, Facebook is Andy Sachs, your Connecticut Realtor, or the Around Town team. You'll find both of our pages there. Uh, Instagram is at AH Sachs um, and at Around Town Team. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. So I'm really excited. This is going to be great. Andy's got a podcast launching very soon. Uh, if, you're, if you're following me on Instagram or wherever, when, it, when the first one drops, I will definitely be sharing your content. Appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to your success here in 2019. Likewise. And I uh, appreciate you being the first one here in the new Guilford studio. I want to see my plaque on the wall next yes. time I come in though. We're getting the, don't forget that Sam, we need the Andy <laughs> Sachs first ever plaque. It's gotta be worth something, right? Absolutely. It'll be, it'll be worth big money on whatever the new eBay thing is in 20 or 30 years. Whatever disruptor that is. Exactly. That's awesome. Man. Thank Dude, you, sir. Appreciate, appreciate it. you brother. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise.